Maybe you have two stores. Two stores. I listen to both. Okay. Okay. I see that. Okay. I don't want, don't want any trouble here. So I'll. <laughs> All right. Ready. Story number one. Did I tell you the story about the the, the, the Rabbi Klein with the, the the comparison of the king that had a garment cut his garment up? Did I tell you that? No. Okay. Here we go. So there was one person, in my original story that I wrote, I read it, I have the name of this person, but he was a, um, a, a big Zionist leader, an Israeli, a big Zionist leader, a non-religious man, a non-religious Jew, but a, a, a person with a good heart and very intellectual. I, I, I didn't, I forgot what his name, name was, but this story must have happened like 50 years ago. And he was in charge of the, the Israeli National Library, the Tel Aviv National Library. His job was to go in the name of Israel and look around the world for books to increase the library. And one of the places where he went was to Chabad. Chabad is this huge library. I think it could be that the library of the Rebbe is the biggest Jewish library, could it be? In the world, I know it's the biggest. Uh, how do you say library of? How do you say um, of, of, of uh, apostate writings? People, uh, uh, you know, the Shabbat and all. That's what I was told. And it, it's a huge, it's a huge, massive library, and there's books that nobody else has, and it's more or less open to the public. So he would go there anyway. So he was by the Rebbe. It ended up that he was there also for Yom Kippur. So there was. A, one of the secretaries of the Rebbe, his name was Rabbi Klein. Rabbi Klein. A wonderful, amazingly talented uh, man. And he was, he was an Israeli, so he was um, in charge of all the Israelis that came to, you know, to, to, to greet them and to host them. And, anyway, so it was Yom Kippur. So Rabbi Klein said, listen, you know, it's Yom Kippur today. I can't, you know, host you. I can't give you any food to eat. I can't but how would you like to come to the synagogue? You know, you can leave whenever you want. You can come back to my house. Whenever you want. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll be interesting. I said, okay, yeah. I, I don't know what the, the history of this person was. If he had ever been to a synagogue or even recently, but for sure, if he had been to a synagogue, it for sure it was not for, you know, religious purposes. It was, for... so anyway, so he went. So as he was he was reading, so they gave him a machzor, you know, the Jewish uh, prayer book for for um, for Yom Kippur, and he, everybody else is praying and they're crying and, and he's sitting reading, you know, he's reading and looking over the words, very interesting, you know, comparing this to that. Anyway, that comes in <clears throat> the prayers of Musaf, a shocking story about the ten martyrs. Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Tarfon, Rabbi Gamil, and how they were raked and tortured, and this by the by the Romans, they were raked to death publicly. They were, they were, they were tortured, burned, whatever, publicly. And over there it says that the angels say to God, this, these people are great Torah scholars. And the Romans are the, you know, they're the low, they're just a bunch of murderers, you know, like the murderers and rapists and the Thieves, and they said, "Zet Torah, Zet Torah. This is the Torah, and this is the reward that a person gets for learning the Torah." And God replied to them, "Be quiet, or I'll turn the world back to water. I'll turn the world back to the confusion that it was before it was created." So this Israeli scholar is looking and says, "What is this? Whoa, whoa." This is really, you know, too much. So he goes to Rabbi Klein and he says, what is this? So they're in the middle of their prayers of, of Yom Kippur. So Rabbi Klein says, we'll talk about it later. So after the Musa prayer, so there's this break, right? There's a break. And before the, the Mincha prayer, usually there's a break of an hour, two hours, whatever. And in that break, so <clears throat> a lot of people stay in the synagogue. So Rabbi Klein says, so he asked Rabbi Klein the story, this, 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 this question. Well, you can't ask questions in Judaism. They're asking, and the angels are saying, what type of a thing is this? You're, you're torturing these holy people to death. What's going on? The Torah doesn't protect them. What? And they're asking a question, how is this the Torah? And, this, and what does God say? Shut up. 
You want me to turn the whole world back to nothing? <laughs> it's a good question, right? Give some sort of a normal, I just uh, 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 a normal answer. So he says, good question. So let's go and ask this old Hasid. So they went over to an old Hasid that was sitting there. And they asked him the question. So he said, oh, good question. I want to answer the question with a parable. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a king. And this king had an advisor who was also like the bishop or whatever. And he also had another advisor who was the tailor. The tailor used to come in to the king to make his garments. And the king used to talk to him. The tailor was a Jew. And the king would talk to this tailor, and once in a while he would get around to asking him, you know, advice or something. And he would give advice, you know, listen, well, I, I would ask him, but I, I think I would do this. And the king liked the advice. And he started getting more and more advice from this tailor. And so it ended up that beside being an excellent tailor, as uh, and he made all the royal garments and everything like that, but he was also very intelligent and he gave very practical advice. This, of course, infuriated the bishop, and he wanted to do anything he could to get rid of this Jew. But what could he do? The king liked him, so he couldn't go and say to the king, hey, this is a Jew, you know, can So he had to be very, very cautious. So he was always praising this, oh, what a wonderful man, this, the, 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 the tailor, you know, Abraham, whatever it is, Abel and the tailor, such a wonderful person, such an honest person. You know, how could it be that anyone said anything bad about the Jews? I don't understand that everyone was like him. And the king said, oh, yes, I see. But meanwhile, he's plotting in his mind, how am I going to get this guy? So one day, he gets an idea. The bishop gets an idea. And he goes into the marketplace. And he, he, heard, he hears that there's this fine silk that has been brought, like, from Italy or somewhere to the, the marketplace. And that they're selling it for all of a sudden he gets this idea. So he goes and he buys the silk and he brings it to the king. And he says, Your Majesty, here I know that upcoming in another month or so there's gonna be your birthday. So I wanted to buy you a present. <laughs> Genuine silk, holy silk, holy silk from Rome. This silk has been blessed by the Pope himself, holy silk. And it is for you, Your Majesty because you are the representative of God in this country. Oh, thank you very much. And so, but uh, I, I think the only one fitting to make you a garment for your birthday, that's why I bought it, is the, the your, your tailor, the Jew. You should give it to him and he should make it. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, he's an excellent tailor. He said, but just one thing, your majesty, this garment, because it's holy and, you know, I mean, we do have sort of a, you know, a accounting with the Jews. We do have sort of an accounting with the Jews. You know, the Jews have, uh, you know, a long history of making trouble for us. Not that I'm suspecting this Jew, but you, know, you can never really tell maybe somebody working by him. So I think you should warn him that he has to return every thread that he doesn't use. Because he might take one of these threads, one of these pieces, and misuse it, you know, for who knows, maybe a lapse back into the old ways. So the king says, how could it be such a thing? But okay, I'll tell him. So he calls Avram, Abraham, the, 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 the tailor, and he gives him the garment. And he tells him, I want you to make a garment for me for my birthday. It's going to be in a couple in a month. But you have to watch out with the pieces. Don't let any of the pieces go to waste or to throw them away because every piece is is precious and uh, the other I'm sort of certain certain no problem your majesty so meanwhile the bishop he knows that it's impossible that it won't get lost some little thread is for certain is going to get lost <clears throat> so, okay so the king makes the gar so the, the Abraham makes the garment for the king and the king tries it on before and it is just exquisite beautiful brings out all the good qualities of the king and it makes him look young and strong and intelligent and glorious and beautiful and radiant and everything you want. Oh, the king he just can't get over it. Just thank you very much and it's seamless. There's no seam, you can't even see the seams. It's just like one piece that just perfectly fits over. 
So the king says, thank you very much. That night comes knocking on the king's door. The king opens the door. There's the bishop standing there with 10 of his, uh, whatever it is, uh, priests. And they're all dressed in black and they have these candles. And they say, your majesty, we have it from very reliable sources that Abraham has stolen several threads of the cloth. Can't be. He said, it is, your majesty. He's stolen the cloth. And he's it's hidden away. You're not going to find it. He said, are you sure? Yes, of course. He swears by the church. He swears by whatever it is. He said, well, that's pretty severe. He says, yes, well, they bring the witnesses. We have witnesses that show that he did the witnesses. So they bring Abraham in in chains. And the king says, Abraham, I see that you've reverted to the ways of your, you know, uh, in, in I think it's what it's called, perfidious ancestors, and you've stolen part of the garment. He says, I didn't steal part of the garment. I don't know what you're talking about. He says, your majesty, you're wrong. Says, Abraham, listen, I have witnesses. I have the bishop himself. I can't go against these. These are men of God. If they say you did, then I'm sorry, but because I like you, I'm going to choose for you an easy death. You'll have an easy death, right? You, it'll be un, not painful, and I'll provide for your family. And it, he says, okay, your majesty, but I want last wish, last request. So, okay. He said, I want the garment. I want you to give me the garment, and I want you to give me a pair of scissors. The king said, listen, if your intention is, is to wreck the garment, then you won't have an easy death. I'll have you tortured to get so that, no problem, Majesty. No problem. That's not what I want to do. So sure enough, they bring him the garment and they bring him a scissors and he puts the garment on the table and he turns it inside out and he starts gently, gently cutting away the pieces, cutting away the threads, and he saves all the threads, puts them on the side, and he takes all the pieces and he has to work for like two hours in order to do this because it's very exactly made. And finally, when he finishes, he puts the whole thing together and he says, have a look, your majesty. The whole entire cloth is there. It's not missing one thread. I used everything in the cloth. I didn't throw anything away. Nothing is gone. All the whole cloth is there. But the bishop thought I, he didn't give anything back to the king. So he, obviously, this is, he must keep some. Won't be able to account for it. Everything is here. And so the king said, wow, that's pretty amazing. You know, you're right. I guess you're right. I guess the, the witnesses that the bishop said, I guess my witnesses were, were liars. I'll have to have them punished. And that's the end of the story. So this rabbi says to this, um, this is all this is all a big metaphor that this rabbi is giving to this Israeli scholar. <clears throat> so he said, what is the point of this metaphor? He says the angels asked the same question as this bishop said. What was the question? What's going on over there? There must be something missing. There must be something missing. Why is it that these holy Torah people are being tortured and tortured? Something is missing from the picture. Something is wrong. God is wrong. What did God say back to them? What do you want me to do? To take the whole world apart and to show you from the very beginning what the original plan was. Like this person took apart the garment and put it from the it's an original state. You want me to turn the world back to its original state, to water, to tow. And so you'll see that this is part of the whole picture. I'm not going to do that for you. I'm not going to do it. Not for an angel, I won't do it. Maybe for a Jew, I will do it. But you see, they're not asking any questions. The, the, uh, the Rabbi Akiva and those people, they're not asking any questions. They understood that this is what God wants. So the same thing with you. <coughs> so that's what he's saying. From the original plan of the world... This is exactly the way things are supposed to be. And that's the first story. And then I'll tell you a second story. Attached to this. Second story. There were three rabbis that were discussing what they would do if they were God. One of those rabbis, I understand the story was Rabbi Levi Yitzhak of Berdichev. The other one, I'm not sure who it was. And the third one was the first Rabbi of Chabad. One of the rabbis said, if I was God, I would make it that there was no problems for the Jews. The other one said, if I was God, then I would make it that the Mashiach would come right now. 
The Alter Rebbe said, if I was God, I would do what God is doing. In other words, God knows what he's doing. Everything that's happening is exactly according to some sort of a plan, just like the garment was from the, 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 the garment that he made was from this original piece of cloth. Everything is perfect, 100%. Nothing is missing. But why does God delay the exile? Why, do, the, the, why does God the, the schlep out this exile? I'm sorry. Why does God make it that there is trouble for the Jews? Who knows? But one thing is for sure that he wants us to do our part. And the Rebbe stressed that our part has basically been done. All we have to do is just increase more good. Make a bigger vessel for the arrival of Mashiach now. This Shabbat is Shabbat Mavorchin, the last Shabbat of the month of Av, the first Shabbat of the, ma of the month of the blessing, the whole month of Elul, Ani Ladodi Ladodi Li, and it should be Dodi Li. We should have the Mashiach now. Have a good Shabbos with Mashiach now. Shalom, everyone. Thank you for coming. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.